Okay, welcome to this lecture on Newtonian mechanics. What I'm going to do is give you a quick review of Newtonian mechanics and basically just what the main fundamental concepts are that we need to revise in order to actually get started with learning Lagrangian and Hamiltonian mechanics. So we have two basic sides to Newtonian mechanics. We have the static side and then we have the dynamics. So in statics, we deal with the, the concept of static equilibrium, which is essentially, you can imagine that if you have a body floating in space and you have a bunch of external forces and external torques acting on it, then all of those forces and torques need to balance out. So the way that we represent that mathematically is we say that sum of the forces is equal to zero. And because force and torque are both vector quantities, we can break this down into three separate equations. So we take some of the forces about each of the axes, and all of them should add up to zero. And then we do the same for the torque. But remember, when you take torque about the x-axis, you're actually taking the torque about the actual axis. So this would be the torque about the x-axis. So it doesn't matter in which directions those torques are going in, in what you're doing is you're breaking it down into the components X, Y, and Z and then adding them up. And of course, you know that the concept of torque in three dimensions is if you have a position vector that gives you the position of particle with respect to the origin and then a force applied at that end, then the torque is simply the, the vector product or the cross product between the two vectors which can also be represented in terms of the magnitudes times sine theta and some normal vector to give it the direction that we need now there are a few types of forces that we need to know of so basically we have a spring force which is essentially equal to the spring constant or the stiffness of the spring times the displacement then we have a damping force. This one is more related to dynamics, but I have included it here because it usually goes hand in hand with the spring force. So you, you will see this in, in many, many different systems. So what is the damping force? Well, you have some damping constant, which is just the equivalent of stiffness in terms of this force. And now you have the velocity. So basically this is a damping force. The damping force absorbs energy. So you can imagine that if you have an object moving or oscillating back and forth, a damping force is actually absorbing energy the more that it moves. So at some point it just causes the, the object to come to a stop. Then we have the weight force, which we're all familiar with. It is just the mass times the gravitational constant, so that's the weight. And we have frictional forces. So for example, you can have the frictional force between two surfaces, and you know that you can relate that to the normal force uh, uh, at one of the bodies times the coefficient of friction. Of course, you have coefficient of static friction in the case that they're both at rest initially, and coefficient of kinetic friction in the case that they're both moving with respect to each other. So there, there, are, there is a point of transition between the two, but we won't be dealing with this too much because you will see that there are equivalent energy methods that can be used that kind of get rid of this kind of problem with uh, transitioning from static to kinetic friction. Okay, so that's it for statics. Those are the basic concepts. You have a bunch of equations, six equations that did characterize the system in equilibrium. You have your three force equations, three torque equations. These are the different types of forces that you commonly encounter. You also have central forces so you have you can have gravitational forces electrostatic forces and so on but we won't discuss those in too much detail we're mainly focused with the mechanics of rigid bodies now in the dynamic section there are a whole lot of additional equations but here i have basically just written down the main ones that we're going to need so in the case of a dynamical system if you have a body that is actually moving through space then in that case we take the sum of the forces and we make that instead of making it equal to zero make, we make it equal to the inertial force which is essentially the force that the, the body is experiencing about its center of mass so you can imagine the, this force to be the total force acting on the body so it will characterize the direction uh, of the motion and basically how much acceleration is involved in terms of all those other external forces acting on it and we have an equivalent expression for torque. So because torque is just a rotational force, we have this quantity here called the moment of inertia or mass moment of inertia, which is the rotational equivalent to mass. It is basically just resistance to rotational motion. And then we have this 
angular acceleration so basically theta double dot so I have included the definitions here we know that this is the second derivative of angular displacement which is just theta and then those are the two main things that we do for force analysis and then for energy we can encounter the following formula so we have total energy of a system equals to kinetic energy plus potential energy and then kinetic energy there are many forms but the main ones that we deal with are kinetic energy in translational motion so basically you have a body and it is moving in a straight line um, across the all x y and z axis and basically what you do is you take the velocity of the body take the dot product with itself and that gives you this scalar quantity which is the kinetic energy so this is something you're familiar with now as you may imagine there's always an analogy in terms of rotational motion so basically if you have a body that is rotating um, like this then basically what will happen there is that the the total kinetic energy of rotation is very similar to this formula as you notice here so instead of the mass we have the mass moment of inertia and instead of the velocity we have the angular velocity which is just the first derivative of angular displacement so these two are going to come out quite a lot when we deal with Lagrangian mechanics because this is the these are the building blocks of uh, the equations of motion of the systems we will look at and then you're going to have the potential energy so basically the potential energy is defined for a whole bunch of different cases so when you place a, a, an object at some height with respect to another body you have mg times the height and that gives you a potential energy there's another one that is quite common which is the potential energy for spring and it is actually just the integral of the spring force with respect to the x which actually gives you 1 over 2 kx squared and the reason it's positive is because we know energy has to be positive so we take the absolute value of that force and we get this expression so those are the main things and apart from energy we know that we have momentum so momentum is essentially defined as mass times velocity so basically it's just a measure of the, the effect of mass on the velocity of the body and then the linear, oh, sorry, not the linear, but rather the angular momentum is just the cross product of the, po the position vector with respect to the momentum vector. So you can imagine this, this is kind of like the torque analog of the linear momentum. We have these two quantities here, as you can see here. So those are the two main concepts that we have. There are, of course, a lot more other equations that will I will pretty much just mention and explain as we go along I won't get time to do everything in a single video like I have now but I just want to make sure that you are familiar with these equations and these concepts and uh, once you understand what these things are all about we can actually pretty much just get started on analyzing systems from a Lagrangian and Hamiltonian point of view so in the next few videos I'm going to introduce you to the mathematical formalism of classical mechanics and after that we're actually going to analyze real systems using these uh, new tools that we learn.